Right now on ABC 7 News at 5, we're tracking Hurricane Charlie, the most powerful storm to strike the U.S. since Andrew a dozen years ago. As its powerful winds and intense rains pound Florida, all eyes are going to be on the potential 20-foot storm surge. Tonight, Washingtonians are getting ready because Charlie could make a very unwelcome visit this weekend. And right now, the center of Charlie is over Punta Gorda, Punta Gorda, Florida. And yeah, there's a chance that some of the energy could have a profound effect on parts of our listening area for tomorrow. We'll have all those details and a whole lot more. Stay with us. ABC 7 News at 5 starts right now. Live from the WJLA Broadcast Center, this is ABC 7 News at 5 on your side. Our power's out and there's pretty much nothing we can do, so. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. No. Packing 145 mile per hour winds, Hurricane Charlie, a dangerous Category 4 storm, makes landfall on Florida's Gulf Coast. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leon Harris. And I'm Kathleen Matthews. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's our top story, tracking Hurricane Charlie. Looking live right now at the radar, we can see the eye of the storm came ashore about an hour ago at Sanibel Island near Fort Myers. Now, that's much farther south than originally forecast, and Charlie keeps uh, making unexpected moves and could continue to surprise us in the coming hours and days. Hurricane Charlie right now is bringing with it 145 mile per hour winds. Now, this is how things looked earlier in the Florida the Keys, where Charlie skirted the coastline before moving north. Wind, rain, and strong waves from the storm caused problems on streets which were deserted. And tonight, nearly two million Floridians have been urged to evacuate their homes. Those who left move inland into shelters. The storm has even affected Medill Air Force Base, which is the nerve center for the war in Iraq. And uh, here's a scene of, for people who weren't expecting to be in Charlie's path. They are quickly now trying to shore up their homes and businesses. Residents who could purchase supplies at hardware stores made a run on plywood and duct tape, as you might expect. Of course, Charlie could set his eyes on our area in the coming days. Doug Hill's going to join us in just a moment with the projected track. But let's begin our coverage this evening in Tampa, Florida, with ABC's Lauren Rogers is there weathering the storm for us. Lauren. Well, here in Tampa Bay, things are relatively calm, but just 100 miles south of here, the story is very, very different. On Sanibel Island and the communities of Boca Grande and Punta Gorda, they are experiencing hurricane force winds. Charlie is now a Category 4 hurricane with winds of up to 145 miles per hour. In addition to that, there's a great deal of lightning associated with this storm, and it's only going to get worse as the eye of the storm approaches. Charlie introduced himself in Key West. It was a glancing blow, the eye of the storm passing 75 miles offshore. But Charlie saved his strongest punch for the mainland. Gathering strength over the Gulf of Mexico, Charlie blasted onto Florida's west coast as a Category 4 storm, packing winds of 145 miles per hour. There was fair warning. 48 hours before Charlie hit, officials began urging 2 million residents and tourists to pack up, board up, and move out. If you are in a mandatory evacuation area, you need to get to high ground now. This is the time. There won't be another request because it will be too late. Mandatory evacuations are in place for scores of beachfront and low-lying communities, forcing thousands of people, young and old, into area shelters. I don't think my condo is going to survive a 120-mile-an-hour breeze. Just the predictions of Charlie's strength were enough to convince most people not to try to wait out the storm in dangerous areas, but not everyone would go. Shelters don't take dogs. I said, I, I don't know where to go with my dog. While Charlie's winds will be devastating, just as threatening is the accompanying storm surge, which could approach 15 feet in Tampa Bay. The city of Tampa is expecting to be swamped. Now, the damage from this storm is expected to be enormous. So while the loss of property is inevitable, the loss of life is not. Officials are urging anyone in the path of Hurricane Charlie to take cover. Live in Tampa, I'm Lauren Rogers. Now back to you. All right, thank you, Lauren. And we are tracking that path of Charlie. ABC 7 Storm Watch Center tonight is uh, headed right now by our chief meteorologist, Doug Hill, who's got the latest for us right now. Doug? It is a, a big storm. Uh, I guess the only good is it's compact, and that is that the worst uh, winds and worst damage are going to be confined to a smaller area. But because Charlie is moving so quickly now, it's going to take damaging winds and the possibility of tornadoes straight through the heart of the Florida Peninsula, up towards Lakeland, Orlando, Disney World, all the way up to Jacksonville. 
and that may all happen before midnight. Let's get you to our 3D Viper view and give you an interesting look at the circulation now. This is in real time where the eye wall now is just passing just to the very west, uh, I mean very close, to Punta Gorda. Now that is just on the south end of the uh, Charlotte Bay there, and it continues to move up to the north northeast at about 22 miles per hour. So on that track, it will continue to take the spiral bands of torrential rain, hurricane force winds, and uh, very possible tornadoes with it along its path. And of course, the bigger question for us, what effect may it have on our area? We'll take a look as we take back 3D Viper view and show you that we've got a, a ways to go between South Florida and the Mid-Atlantic and up in our area. But check out our weather computer. We've got some of the latest information from the Hurricane Center now as far as its winds and gust up to 167 miles per hour. And look at this track. The track line takes the center of this system uh, just near between Point Lookout and Smith Point, Virginia, about 2 a.m. Sunday. Now, uh, this track will be continually updated as the storm approaches. Now, you remember this morning, it looked like it was a done deal. It was headed for Tampa Bay, but it only came on shore about 110 miles south of that. So if, if just hours before landfall, the uh, estimates of its location can be off by 100 miles, and obviously the estimations what effects it could have on us tomorrow could be off too if it moves. But let's go back to the weather computer for just a second and show you the uh, effects it may have in our area timeline-wise with some sun and some fog early in the morning, then some showers and isolated thunderstorms, especially south and east of the city at 2 in the afternoon, then between 8 o'clock tomorrow night and 2 a.m. Sunday morning, gusty winds. There will be some coastal flooding on the lower bay. We'll explore that in more detail in a few minutes and be out of here by Sunday and back to beautiful late uh, August weather by uh, Sunday afternoon. So a long way to go with this. We'll keep on top of it and give you the very latest coming up from the Fort. For you know what it is, the first alert forecast center. <laughs> Kathleen? Doug, thank you. And as Hurricane Charlie makes its way up the East Coast, following Doug's timeline, folks here in the Washington area are bu uh, busy preparing for a hit. So Leslie Cook continues our live team coverage now. She's in Old Town, Alexandria, which is an area that's prone to flooding. And Leslie, tell us what kind of preparations people are making there tonight. Uh, Kathleen, they are taking this very seriously here in Old Town, Alexandria. Just look at the sandbags already out at the doorways of businesses along King Street here. You remember Isabel came through here about a year ago. She did some major damage. Well, the city is once again getting these sandbags out, telling people to be ready, and they're not taking any chances when it comes to Charlie. I'm going to put these on the, uh, in the back in the basement door. Kathy Brown just moved to Old Town, but she's heard the flooding stories, so she's digging in and getting ready. I went for a run this morning and I saw that everyone else is gearing up. So when I saw this pile of sand, I thought, why not? Better be safe than sorry. On Gibbon Street, longtime residents watch the rain closely and stack sandbags at their doors. They've been through this before. The cars were totaled and the houses were filled and the crawl spaces got filled up with the water, the rain water and the sewer water. And then it crept up through the floorboards. Businesses in Old Town definitely know the storm prep routine. Isabel closed dozens of these shops and restaurants last year. And workers at the Christmas attic have this reminder to not let it happen again. We kind of learned from Isabel that I mean, we, because all, all we did during Isabel was we put up sandbags, that was it. This time they've used more sandbags and added plywood covers on the doors. Charlie might not hit this area with the strength of Isabel, but some in Alexandria are getting ready for him with just as much force. A city officials handed out 600 of these sandbags to businesses here in the Old Town area yesterday. They still have three locations right now that are open where people can go and get those sandbags. They're at 500 South Union Street, Pitt and Gibbon, and Commonwealth Avenue and Reed Avenue. City officials again advising folks in Old Town to get ready early. Don't wait until the storm gets here. And you can bet they will all be watching the weather very closely. We're live in Old Town, Alexandria. Leslie Cook, ABC 7 News. All right, thank you, Leslie. Well, the district is also preparing for Charlie tonight. At U.S. Park Police Headquarters, sandbags are being prepared. They're also being made available at D.C. government buildings. The city also is clearing out catch basins to prevent any flooding there. Now, the storm is also having an effect on train travel. Amtrak is suspending service for affected areas. Amtrak's auto train that operates between Lorton, Virginia and Sanford, Florida was canceled today. Service between Boston, Washington, D.C. and Newport News is not affected at this hour. Now, the storm is also causing some problems for air travel. Take a look at these live pictures of Reagan National Airport. Hard to tell that uh, there's a lot of consternation in the air there. Charlie has forced the cancellation of flights to Florida, and it's also causing delays elsewhere. Those problems are also being felt at Dulles Airport and BWI as well this evening. 
We'll have more on that at 5.30, uh, rather, in a live report here, plus the latest from Doug Hill coming up in this newscast. So stay tuned. Kathleen? Meantime, in other news tonight, there are new developments in the murder of an armored car guard. A reward fund is now being offered to find the person who gunned down Jason Schwindler one week ago outside a bank in Hyattsville. That's where Prince George's County Bureau Chief Brad Bell is live tonight with details and these new developments in the case. Brad? Well, Kathleen, you know, just about exactly a week ago at this moment, I stood just about here telling you about this murder. It was a horrible, it was an ambush on the front steps of the bank, just about where you see those women standing. Witnesses described the suspects then fleeing in a stolen car, and that was the last anybody saw of them until today, when the FBI released two surveillance photos. You're looking at the image of a killer. Seconds after taking a man's life, he's running for his own. In this photo, the man has joined an accomplice. They're carrying the cash bag they stole from their victim. This photo shows the man they killed, 28-year-old armored car courier Jay Schwindler, along with his wife and infant son. Tonight, Schwindler's widow wants you to think of all three pictures and help police catch the men who murdered her husband. If you know anything or know anybody that moved, News anything, please call. Help heal a broken heart. One week ago, Schwindler was ambushed as he carried two cash bags into the BB&T bank on Hamilton Street in Hyattsville. Today, the FBI announced a $100,000 reward. You may know of the planning. You may know of uh, the stolen vehicles. You may know of the actual crime itself. We need your help. Chrissy Schwindler is afflicted with Huntington's disease, and her emotions now make it difficult to speak. But she and her family want those who may have information to see their pain, to see her one-year-old son clutching his father's photo. They hope it makes an impression. The baby is not going to know his father. And we need anybody out there that saw anything with this to try to help us catch these people. Back live, that's the surveillance camera that captured those images. In it, you can see that one of the suspects is wearing a dark winter coat. The other is wearing a light heavy winter coat. Both had hoods, both had ski masks. Because of that, unfortunately, the FBI doesn't really have a description. They never got a look at the suspect's faces. Still, they hope that somehow or another, these photos and the story of the family will jog somebody's memory. And they're asking that person to give them a call. Reporting live in Hyattsville, Brad Bell, ABC7 News. Yeah, thanks, Brad. A woman was seriously injured when she jumped out of a window to escape a fire in the district. The 25-year-old woman landed head first when she leaped from a second-story window. The fire broke out early this afternoon at an apartment complex in the 200 block of 16th Street in Northeast. Fire officials say the woman showed no signs of movement when she was evaluated there at the scene. She's been taken to an area hospital. The cause of the fire, that is still under investigation. America is mourning the loss of a television icon. Julia Child died in her sleep overnight at a California retirement home. Suzanne Kennedy is live in the newsroom. She's got more on this beloved character and well-known chef. Suzanne? Well, Leon, Julia Child was irreverent and fun. She brought French cooking into American homes and made it look easy. Welcome to the French chef. I'm Julia Child. Julia Child was at home in the kitchen and made us all feel that we, too, could be world-class chefs. So I have enough eggs in here to go on and on and on. And this is really, I think it's just such fun. You can get the whole family in on the act. Child originally hoped to be a novelist or a basketball player. But when her husband was stationed with the Foreign Service in France, she picked up the art of French cooking. Well, I really like French cooking the best. And I think people often think just of tourist cooking, but I like the good old French home cooking. In 1961, she co-wrote Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Two years later, her popular cooking show, The French Chef, the French debuted Chef. on public television and became an instant hit. There was no <laughs> other cooking show going at all at that point. And there wasn't any until for about two years. So we had the place to ourselves. Child headlined eight more television shows and published nine more cookbooks, becoming well known to all of America. The woman, who in her 30s could barely boil water, will forever be remembered as one of our country's most renowned chefs. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit.
Over the years, Julia Child ignored diet fads, continuing to love that rich French cooking. She once said, I would much rather swoon over a few slices of prime beefsteak or one serving of chocolate mousse or a sliver of foie gras than indulge on such non-entities as fat-free gelatin pudding. Reporting live in the newsroom, Suzanne Kennedy, ABC 7 News. Thank you, Suzanne. Coming up on ABC 7 News at 5, a problem in the city has now become a problem for the suburbs. See how some local residents want to take action against rats. Plus, is the code orange terror threat spreading police too thin in the area? As evidence tonight, there's just not enough manpower on the street. It was definitely a shock, to say the least. I mean, you know, the odds are not in anyone's favor, really, to have quads. So when we found out, we were definitely shocked. They thought they were having twins, but a Laurel couple has doubled their bundle of joy thanks to a medical miracle. We have more on that when we come back after this break. Closed captioning brought to you by The Vitamin Shop. When the sky shows its fury, there's one place you can turn. Doug Hill and ABC 7 First Alert Weather. Precise, on target, in the midst of chaos. Complete control. Complete control. Backed by the area's largest team of trusted meteorologists and the most advanced forecasting technology available. When violent weather is on the way and you need to know, turn to the voice of experience in the face of any storm. Depend on Doug Hill, ABC7 First Alert Weather. If you've never shopped the Vitamin Shop, now's your chance. Because 100 of the Vitamin Shop's best-selling items are now at their lowest prices of the summer. Want firmer, younger-looking skin? Then stop. Get Reviva Alpha Lipoic Acid Cream, now half off. Want to build muscle and burn fat? Then stop. America's number one protein powder designer way, just $16.95. So if you've never stopped at the Vitamin Shop, come on in and save. But you better hurry. This sale goes by fast. Hohenka Acura is out to break all sales records with Formula 400. Shop at the world's largest Acura dealer and find over 400 NDXs, TSXs, TLs, and other Acuras available. Save thousands on a certified 04 TL starting from just 29 dollars Drive a sporty 04 RSX for just $189 a month or buy it with 1.9% financing. Or get an 04 MDX for just $299 per month. Hurry to the Formula 400 exclusively in Hohenka Acura and see why selection and price make us the world's largest Acura dealer. Just imagine what you can do with the time you save by calling Empire today for your new carpet. With just one call, we'll bring a great selection of carpet to choose from. There's no run around and no wait because we install next day. Right now, you'll save 50% plus no payments till 2006. And get a free gift. Call Empire today. In no time, you'll have new carpet and more time for whatever. 800-588-2300. Empire. Today. Sooner or later, it's going to hit you that you have to save for your retirement. For a happy ending, choose to save. Three. It's Toyota Talk, the nationwide clearance event, the year's biggest event. You've got to act now. Get big clearance savings on 2004 Camry sedans with a thousand cash back or 2.9 percent APR financing, or lease a 2005 Camry LE for just 2.29 a month for 48 months with 19.95 due at signing. Your new Camry is loaded with standard features. Toyota Time selection, value, clearance now. Now, back in January, Katie and Bob Poole of Laurel found out they were pregnant, right? <laughs> well, a week later, they found out they were having twins. Well, two weeks after that, they found out they were really pregnant. They are having quadruplets. And then after that, they were afraid to go to the doctor again. <laughs> Just kidding. Our medical reporter, Kathy Fowler, joins us now with a story of this uh, baby boom. Right. Well, thankfully, the multiplying stopped at four. But the pool still had more to worry about. Doctors warned them that carrying quadruplets full term puts all the babies and the mother's health at risk. But the couple, well, they didn't blink an eye. The boy obviously blew. Katie and Bob Poole had to quickly come up with a system just to tell their quadruplets apart. It's not that bad right now. This is Robert the Third. He's the easiest. He's the only boy, so he'll always be dressed in blue. Gabrielle's a lot smaller. The three identical girls are a little tougher. Gabrielle starts with a G, so she'll be dressed in green. Danielle will be dressed in yellow because that's the color of a daffodil, which also starts with a D. And Mackenzie will always be dressed in. 
That's amazing. Now that that's down, Katie and Bob just have to worry about the 900 diapers a month, the thousands of feedings, a bigger house, college and weddings, and so on. Definitely a little scary. But what was even scarier was the thought of having no kids. That's what the pools faced just a year ago before in vitro fertilization. To have a family was real important to both of us. And knowing that we couldn't have a family at first, having a little problem, you know, um, and then finally being successful. We are blessed. Due to the advances in infertility treatments, multiple births are on the rise. But it still represents a small percentage of total births. Take the year 2002. There were more than 4 million children born, 125,000 of them twins, almost 7,000 triplets, and only 434 quadruplets. Multiple births usually come with multiple health risks. The pools are just thankful their kids are all healthy. Everyone's doing just great. It's going to be a lot of work, um, but wouldn't trade it in for anything. Now, the pools are getting help from family and friends and even donations of diapers and money from generous strangers. And the couple have been told by many not to turn down any help. For more information on the local quadruplets, just log on to our website at WJLA.com. Reporting live, Kathy Fowler, ABC 7 News. Kathy, that was fun. Thanks. Well, despite the rain forecast for this weekend here in the Washington area, 1,500 people are on their way to walking 60 miles as part of the breast cancer three-day event. Officials with that rest race say they are monitoring the weather, however, and in the event of any flooding, they will work with local authorities to modify their route. They say the safety of walkers is, of course, a primary concern. But as of now, there are no plans to cancel that event. Well, we were just wondering whether or not the Redskins game might be affected by all this rain that's coming in here. What do you think, Doug? Yeah, tomorrow evening, I mean, potentially there, there could be some very strong winds, very heavy rain uh, during the game. But as I tried to mention a few minutes ago, it's really hard to say exactly where the center is going to be 24 hours from now because we learned this morning that even a few hours before landfall, the whole everything changed because it made a turn unexpectedly and came in 100 miles south of Tampa Bay. So it's fairly more erratic than most of these hurricanes. No, they, tend to be? by nature they're that way. Yeah. I mean, they had a very good track for a long time, and all of a sudden, boop, it made yeah. a right-hand turn. Why? Well, they'll go back and, and, and take a look, but that's just the nature of hurricanes. So mm -hmm. uh, we can set you up for what is likely to happen, what potentially is happening. There's no person on Earth can sit here and tell you exactly what's going to happen to your weather tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. We'll take our best best work okay. at it. Let's give you uh, start with our Viper view. Now, this little blob of uh, rain you see off the Atlantic Ocean east of New Jersey. That's what was once Bonnie. That made a rapid stage right exit off the Delmarva Peninsula this morning, and that is history. Now let's go down to the hot spot, and it is a wild system. This hurricane, it may even touch close to Category 5 status before it made landfall. Now the eye, still well defined, is inland. Our 3D Viper view is showing the center now just to the north of Punta Gorda. It came across Charlotte Bay, really did a number on Captiva and Sanibel Islands off the southwest coast of Florida, north and west of Fort Myers. It's continuing to move north north east about 22 miles per hour. So this whole hurricane structure is going to move up towards Lakeland and Orlando and eventually towards Jacksonville later tonight. Enormous amount of damage from the early reports, but just too early to, to categorize it more than that. Just all uh, degrees of property damage down there. Cluster of thunderstorms along the Carolina coast now kind of unrelated, but we're going to watch this thing make a move. I do want to tell you we have on live Super Doppler 7 radar, um, we do have a little storm here to the south and west, but it's unrelated to anything else. Let's get going to our uh, computer graphics and show you the track and the information. The latest Hurricane Center has this thing, a uh, plot has it west of Punta Gorda, moving north, northeast to 22. Now that track will take the center back over the ocean uh, by uh, sunrise tomorrow morning. And then the latest official track brings it to the north, right along coastal Virginia and Carolina, North Carolina. So the center will pass somewhere between Point Lookout and Smith Point in Virginia uh, sometime early Sunday morning. Now again, this track is critical because this thing will not be as strong, obviously, as it is now. Nowhere nearly as strong as it is, but as it goes to the north, it will still have a circulation center. It will still have gusty winds, torrential rain, and the possibility of very intense thunderstorms with it. And exactly where the center of this storm goes will have all the determination in the world of who gets the heavy rain and who doesn't. So we're going to watch that hour by hour tonight and tomorrow for you. Meanwhile, the rest of the weather here, fairly quiet, as we expect sunshine in the morning, maybe some fog, some thunderstorms possibly over southern eastern suburbs beginning in the afternoon, the gusty winds and heavy rains coming tomorrow night, and then by early Sunday morning, it should be history, and by Sunday afternoon, it should be beautiful around here again with blue skies and comfortable temperatures. 78 degrees at Reagan National right now, cloudy skies, peak of sunshine now and then, northwesterly winds. Uh, temperatures will hold in the 70s to low 80s, very comfortable. The uh, weather all across the east is cool, one, the trough of low pressure causing the 
the coolness in the Great Lakes and the storminess causing the coolness in the east. And the whole story will be where will Charlie go, how much wind, how much oomph will it have left when it gets up to our latitude uh, late tomorrow. We'll do our job and stay on top of it and give you the best information we can. In the meantime, cloudy skies at bedtime, a peak of sun in the morning, showers and storms as we go through the day. Highs barely touching 80 with good air quality. And once we get beyond all this, hey, the weather pattern looks pretty good. As we get through Sunday, and Monday, Tuesday, looks nice, doesn't it? Look, nice weather, low 80s, good vacation weather. Nah, I won't say any more about that. Good vacation weather for next week, so it looks good. But we'll get you through the night and tomorrow and have frequent updates. And uh, as we get more information on the damage down there, we'll pass it along to you. Doug came back right. from his vacation to keep you informed, so that's okay. it's great to have you here. I'm happy Just to be back. Just the kind of guy guys. he is. That's why we love him. All right. <laughs> but thanks, Doug. We're going to continue our tracking of Charlie coming up on ABC 7 News at 5. And what will all the rain this weekend mean for the soil that's already saturated from previous rains? Well, tonight we'll show you what you can do to prevent disaster at your house. Plus, uh, we'll think children speak their own language, but, uh, you know, how learning a foreign one? Yeah, you know, find out what a new study has to say about that. But next, a cigarette is to blame for this fatal fire. We'll have the details right after this break. ABC 7 News, brought to you in part by Wendy's. So, guys, any words of wisdom? Yeah, run. <laughs> Well, uh, Wendy's bacon mushroom melt is back. That's awesome. Oh, with bacon and warm cheddar cheese sauce. Uh, and those mushrooms. Huge help, guys. Thanks. I gotta have one. I'm getting married in five minutes. Come on. How long could it take? The one you love is back. Wendy's delicious bacon mushroom melt. It's better here. See where we had to have one? I do. And our pickup window's open till 1 a.m. or later. Four braces. The Jewelry Factory is a direct diamond importer. The Jewelry Factory manufactures their jewelry direct. Three stone earrings and pendants are $99. One carat three stone rings are $4.99. Buy factory direct and save. The Jewelry Factory in Bethesda. So much is going on. You never know what will happen or when. That's why ABC 7 News dedicates so many resources to covering the news, where it happens, when it happens. Leon Harris, another reason to watch ABC 7 News on your side. A cigarette is to blame for a deadly fire in the district. Firefighters say a 72-year-old man was apparently smoking while lying on a sofa this morning. The man was pulled from the fire, but he died a short time later. Crews managed to contain the flames to that one apartment, however, which was in the 400 block of Missouri Avenue in northwest Washington. Well, some Bowie residents say that there is a growing rat problem in their city. For the past month, several homeowners have spotted rats on their property, and now they want the city to take action. But city officials say they've only heard isolated incidents and that it's not a citywide problem. But one resident's not satisfied and is petitioning now for the city to recognize this problem. I went out back and moved to lawnmower, and there was this, at first I thought it was a squirrel, and a big rat came out from underneath of it. The next day, I met my neighbor next door, and he told me, he says, Robin, I didn't want to tell you, um, but uh, for about a month now, I've been doing nothing but killing rats. Well, both residents and city officials say they don't know where this rat population is coming from. Could be something that's spurred on by the cicadas we talked about earlier. Well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 5, with security beefed up all around the area, how safe is the district from a potential terrorist attack? We're going to tell you about an incident today that highlights the vulnerability. But first, how the pending storm is taking its toll on travel throughout the U.S. A live report on that when ABC 7 News at 5 continues after the break. It's new, exciting, and it's on sale at Hex Fall Fashion Hit Sale right now. It's the newest ponchos. It's brooches and earrings on sale. It's exciting stripes for men. Drive prices even lower with your bonus coupons. It's new, exciting, and on sale only at Hex. My disease is called osteosarcoma, and it's a bone cancer. This could kill her. First thing out of Matthew's mouth is, Mommy, I'm scared. I said, Matthew, that's OK, because I'm scared, too. She has a serious disease that kills. We're not giving up. We're going to fight. St. Jude is the place that's going to cure her. Watch Saving Kids Like Me with Marlo Thomas on ABC7 tonight at 8 p.m. If you've never shopped the Vitamin Shop, now's your chance. Because 100 of the Vitamin Shop's best-selling items are now at their lowest prices of the summer. Need to lose a few pounds? Then stop. 
Get Trim Spa, now only $29.95. Want to boost your immune system? Then stop, because PB8 Probiotic is now half off. So if you've never stopped at the vitamin shop, come on in and save. But you better hurry. This sale goes by fast. You can buy this stool at a fancy schmancy furniture store. They call it an ottoman, and it costs 499 bucks. I call that crazy. You see, for the same price, you can afford a whole lot more at Room Store. Like this. We call it a sofa. You can buy it at Room Store for just $4.99. I call that smart. Very smart. Do it all Hohenka Acura is out to break all sales records with Formula 400. Shop at the world's largest Acura dealer and find over 400 NDXs, TSXs, TLs, and other Acuras available. Save thousands on a certified 04 TL starting from just 29 dollars Drive a sporty 04 RSX for just $189 a month or buy it with 1.9% financing. Or get an 04 MDX for just $299 per month. Hurry to the Formula 400 exclusively in Hohenka Acura and see why selection and price make us the world's largest Acura dealer. Save big at the Fall Fashion Hits Sale right now at Hex. Save on bedding from Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger. Towels in the most exciting colors are on sale. Get great pillows from Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger, too. Always something there to excite me. Only at Hex. You're watching ABC 7 News at 5 on your side. So we cross the bottom of the hour, a powerful hurricane Charlie tops tonight's headlines. The Category 4 hurricane has struck Florida's west coast, packing 145 mile per hour winds. A predicted storm surge is so massive at this point, it could devastate coastal and low lying areas of Florida. Nearly 2 million people have been urged to evacuate the Sarasota and Tampa Bay areas. Charlie's also expected to move through the Washington area over the course of this weekend, and sandbags are lining the doors already in Old Town Alexandria to protect houses and businesses from possible flooding there. Some businesses say they actually learned to prepare after facing the wrath of tropical storm Isabel last year. Well, the impact of Charlie is already being felt in our area as Amtrak and airlines have canceled service. Travelers now already stranded even before a drop of rain has fallen here. Richard Reeve continues our live team coverage. He is standing by at Reagan National Airport. Tell us the latest, Rich. Well, Leon, as you would expect, a little bit of the mid, mid, mad dash as people are trying to get flights. The trouble spot, obviously, is Florida. And now, instead of the travel game, people are playing the waiting game. At Reagan National, troubled skies above and scheduling hassles straight ahead. Hey, what are you going to do? You just got to hurry up and wait then. Right. <laughs> George Zapata and his family trying to get home to Florida, forced to switch airports there. They offer us to fly to West Palm Beach or wait until tomorrow or stand by. News about Charlie is primetime viewing here. I guess I'm going to have to wait. I ain't got no choice right now. Clyde Tomlinson from St. Petersburg hopes he's only temporarily stranded. I had a 940 flight, but they canceled it out to 740 tonight. So I really don't know if I'm still going to leave tonight or not. All depend on how the weather going to be. By Friday afternoon, only a few posted cancellations to the southeast. The Valenti family finding their Caribbean cruise delayed. We had had a previous flight to come in on Saturday morning, and um, we were just very cautious that it wouldn't, wouldn't make it, and so we decided to book another flight uh, today. It was almost as if the hurricane never hit. Nina McQueen, just back from Florida, thinks she got out just in time. We were, like, pushed along some kind of way, but bless God, we, we made it. Well, she made it back home safely. Now, U.S. Airways has canceled flights to these cities, Fort Myers, Sarasota, Fort Walton Beach, and Panama City. Those have been posted for a couple of days, so you won't see as many stranded folks here now. They've obviously rerouted and changed their plans. But we ran into one guy who is going down to Fort Lauderdale this afternoon. So probably the best advice is to check with your local carrier. Reporting live, Richard Reeve, ABC 7 News. All right. Thanks, Richard. Now, we're going to check in with Doug Hill again in just a few minutes here, and then we should also let you know that he'll 
will be in this weekend tracking Charlie for you. Tomorrow, Doug's going to have live updates throughout the afternoon, and at 6 a.m. Sunday, we'll have a live special newscast on our cable sister station, News Channel 8. And if the conditions warrant, we'll also bring that to you here on ABC7, so make sure you keep it tuned here. For the past two weeks, we've been telling you about the new Code Orange security measures in place in downtown Washington. Well, this time, the Secret Service has closed the sidewalk on 15th Street Northwest, right outside the Treasury Department. The restriction covers a two-block stretch of the sidewalk and a parking lot. And in light of the code orange threat, security is beefed up throughout the city. But today, a suspicious package showed just how vulnerable downtown can be in an, the event of an attack. Kevin Schultz is live at the D.C. Bureau tonight to explain actually what happened today, Kevin. Kathleen, fortunately, it was not a bomb, but officers with the U.S. Mint Police said that there was a major delay in getting a bomb-sniffing dog to the scene of a suspicious package on the edge of Chinatown this morning. But D.C. police say they had it covered. They had a bomb squad there on time, and they did not need a dog. <laughs> U.S. Mint Police say the call went out at 729 this morning for a suspicious package in an alley near the Mint Building at 8th and H Streets Northwest. At 740, Mint Police say they put out a call for a bomb-sniffing dog. They say they waited for an hour and 10 minutes until the FBI police arrived with a bomb sniffing dog. Nowadays, because of code orange, because of all the procedures, it is becoming increasingly uh, more common than it was, let's say, uh, prior to all of this. It delays the ability to verify whether or not what type of package you have. D.C. police say bomb technicians arrived on the scene soon after they were called, and they say it's policy to use the latest technology, not a dog, to clear a suspicious package. They say their bomb-sniffing dogs are used for bomb threats or to clear vehicles or rooms. But several federal agencies within the district do use bomb-sniffing dogs to clear suspicious packages, including the Federal Protective Service. You're getting at least two to three calls a day. Inspector Darius Sultan says during the heightened security, he and his dog Tarzan are one of many canine units responding constantly. There's, there's a certain limited amount to call on because we actually we have to do checkpoints like this. So we might be busy, we can respond, but it may take us some time to get there. If we had a thousand dogs and we can place a dog on every corner, it would take no response time. Bomb technicians with the D.C. police say they respond to 400 to 500 suspicious packages every year. U.S. Mint police say that this morning's package turned out to be an empty computer case that someone had left behind. Reporting live from Northwest Washington, Kevin Schultz, ABC 7 News. Thanks, Kevin. Turning overseas now, a Waldorf man has been killed in Iraq. The Department of Defense identifies him as 49-year-old Rick Albright. He was an Air Force civilian assigned to the 33rd Field Investigative Squadron out of Andrews Air Force Base. He died following a mortar attack in Kirkuk on Sunday. And after hundreds of people have been in several days of intense fighting, the killed rather intense fighting, American forces have temporarily suspended their offensive in the Iraqi city of Najaf. Talks now are underway, but U.S. soldiers and Marines are still allowed to fire back if they're attacked. And there's word today that the rebel cleric leading the militants, Muqtada al Sadr, has been hurt in the fighting. His supporters say that al Sadr has been wounded in the leg and in the chest. Turning now to the latest, in Vote 2004, the Bush-Cheney campaign launched its third television ad of the week today. Watch this. In 1972, there were 40 democracies in the world. Today, 120. The ad is titled Victory and is timed for the start of the Olympic Games tonight and uses the games as a backdrop to highlight that two more free nations are in the games. Teams from Afghanistan and Iraq are competing this year. Meanwhile, rival John Kerry argues that the president's policies in Iraq have contributed to rising oil prices. Speaking at a front porch meeting with supporters in Eugene, Oregon, Kerry says rising prices have negatively affected economic growth. Senator Kerry also criticized the president tax cuts, saying the burden of taxes has shifted from the wealthy to the middle class. Kerry ends his two-week cross-campaign, cross-country campaign tour tonight. Coming up on ABC 7 News at 5, meet this week's working woman who has her sights set on Hur Hurricane Charlie, believe it or not. But first, foreign language for toddlers. What new research is saying about your child's learning abilities. That story and much more news next on ABC 7 News at 5. Your favorite radio station doesn't play songs, but we do give you traffic and weather together every 10 minutes on the 8th. 
Washington's news, traffic, and weather station, WTOP Radio. It's new, exciting, and it's on sale at Hex Fall Fashion Hits Sale right now. It's the newest ponchos. It's brooches and earrings on sale. It's exciting stripes for men. Drive prices even lower with your bonus coupons. It's new, exciting, and on sale only at Hex. Who knows what you can accomplish in the time you save by calling Empire today for your new carpet and flooring. You'll choose from a great selection of carpet, laminate, and hardwood right at home. And we install next day. Right now, you'll save 50%, plus no payments till 2006. Order now and get two two-for-one coupons to any participating Six Flags theme park. Come on, it's playtime. Call Empire today. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. Sooner or later, it's going to hit you that you have to save for your retirement. For a happy ending, choose to save. Three. down off the vehicle no 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 you just want my clearance cash no sir uh keep the clearance cash we just like you to come down off the vehicle no i'm not coming down i can't come down come on be a pal uh, oh. during ford's model year clearance claim your ford f-150 with 5,000 clearance cash or zero percent financing who do you need us to call we'll call your wife you know get you down off the uh, no my vehicle. wife's on the van over there Save big at the Fall Fashion Hits Sale right now at Hex. Save on bedding from Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger. Towels in the most exciting colors are on sale. Get great pillows from Ralph Lauren and Tommy Hilfiger, too. Always something there to excite me. Only at Hex. When the sky shows its fury, there's one place you can turn. Doug Hill and ABC7 First Alert Weather. When violent weather is on the way and you need to know, turn to the voice of experience. Depend on Doug Hill. ABC7 First Alert Weather. Working Woman, brought to you by your Washington area Toyota dealers. You know, many parents worry about getting their children into good preschools to learn the basics, like their ABCs before they even enter kindergarten. That's right, but scientists say parents shouldn't underestimate their baby's learning abilities at a young age. In fact, many can quickly move beyond baby talk to actually learn a foreign language at a very early age. Megan Kendall has more. When you listen to a foreign language, doesn't it sound like the words all run together? Well, that's how it sounds when you're first learning any language. There aren't any spaces in between the words the way there are spaces between printed words in a page. So how do we learn to add those spaces and understand the vocabulary? To find out, psycholinguists at the University of Rochester set up a lab and created miniature languages packed with nonsense words. We made up some words and strung them together and had them produced by a speech synthesizer. Doesn't sound like much, does it? It mostly sounded like gibberish. But the research shows if you listen long enough, it starts to make sense. After a little while, you start to hear a pattern. That... Psycholinguists have discovered the human brain keeps track of the pattern, or frequency and consistency, with which certain sounds follow each other. And that can be used to figure out what the words of the language are. This shows the brain makes more extensive use of highly complex math formulas than researchers ever realized. It looks like the brain is really amazing at absorbing these kinds of frequencies or statistics, as we call them, and using those to learn a language. And the study shows that babies are incredibly rapid learners. In fact, they may have an advantage over adults. They don't need to be instructed to pay attention to this information. They're naturally acquiring it, like, like absorbing it like a sponge. <laughs> Researchers say adults actually start out learning a new language as well as babies, but after a few years, the kids pass them by. Megan Kendall, ABC 7 News. The scientists say most babies are exposed to enough of their native language in everyday activities to learn it on their own, and that there are no studies that show double the exposure means twice the learning. Still ahead here on ABC 7 News at 5, we're going to hear from a young woman who took some heroic actions when the pilot of her plane fell unconscious. But first, many folks are already dealing with flooded basements and downed trees from some of the rain we've had earlier this week. So how will the area be able to handle all that new rain we're going to get from Charlie? We have that story next. Sometimes stuff just doesn't work right. That's why you should drive a Toyota certified used vehicle. Toyotas have that dependable quality, so you shouldn't have to worry about high repair costs. Don't you wish Toyota made more stuff? 
See your Toyota dealer now for great low financing on Toyota certified used vehicles. The best new cars make the best used cars. If you've been hurt in a car accident, you want Chasen and Boscolo. Chasen and Boscolo. If you've been hurt in a car accident, call Chasen and Boscolo. Chasen and Boscolo. 1 800 728 5898. Get the money you need. Get the money you deserve. Call Chasen and Boscolo. Chasen and Boscolo. It's the smart thing to do. If you've been hurt in a car accident, call the lawyers at Chasen and Boscolo. 1 800 728 5898. Ross presents a Shoe Week extravaganza. Women's shoes, men's shoes, kids' shoes, and an extraordinary selection of athletic shoes. Save 50 to 70% on the top brands and the latest styles. So hurry to Shoe Week at Ross. The savings will be music to your ears. all the benefits of leasing in a buy at Chevy Chase Acura in Bethesda. For example, get an 04 MDX for just $3.99 per month. And that's a buy, not a lease. Plus, buy or lease any new Acura from Chevy Chase this week and get 50% off all accessories. Make the smart move to the Acura dealer closest to $4.95 and home to free car washes for life. Chevy Chase Acura. We're driving Bethesda. Hyundai's winning streak summer clearance is now held over. Save big on the Hyundai Sonata, named highest ranked entry midsize car in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. It's this dedication to initial quality that lets Hyundai offer America's best warranty. 10 years, 100,000 miles. Plus, you get $2,000 cash back or 0% APR on every Sonata. So don't walk, run to Hyundai's winning streak summer clearance. Get a 2004 Hyundai Sonata with $2,000 cash back or 0% APR. This was the scene earlier today in Key West, Florida. Despite the heavy winds and rain, the city was actually spared the brunt of Hurricane Charlie. Instead, it is moving now up the western Florida coast tonight. And when Charlie makes landfall and heads this way, it actually could pound the Washington area with lots of wind and rain. Yeah, right, and, and it's a problem because the ground here is already saturated. And that could cause some major problems down the road. Stephen Cheetah joins us now from northwest Washington. He's got details on that angle of the story for us this evening. Stephen? Leanne, with Charlie bearing down on the metro area, there is a lot of worry tonight about leaking roofs, flooding basements, and falling trees. A crew races to get downspouts on this house. If they're not in place before the rain hits, the house could suffer. Well, there's a possibility that it'll flood the basement and it'll also tear the interior walls up inside the house. Okay, it's in the wall. Era Marshall invested in a sump pump to keep water out of her basement, but she still got plenty of it yesterday. We can't fight Mother Nature. She did her job and she tore us up. In the basement of the Islander restaurant, supplies float in a pool of stagnant water. The owner worries about Charlie bringing more rain. We have an overflow of water in the basement. And when you have water, you have rats, you have all kinds of rodents and whatever growing. Frank DeSanti from Stanley Steamer goes door to door to give estimates for suctioning basements. He expects a very busy weekend. We're going to have a lot of water damage calls. A lot of residences are going to be flooded, and a lot of businesses are going to be flooded. District tree trimmers already are clearing down branches. The earth is so damp, the roots of some trees are already loose. And then you get wet weather and high wind, and you're, we're going to lose a lot of trees, I'm afraid. Yeah. While these trees can stand very, very tall, their roots can run only about two feet deep. So when the ground gets very soft and we get hit with a stiff wind, these great big old trees can come crashing down. Reporting live, Stephen Cheetah, ABC 7 News. Stephen, thank you. And in other news tonight, for the 10th time, authorities have searched a Utah landfill to no avail for the body of a missing pregnant woman. Detectives overseeing the work at the landfill say they know they're looking in the right place for the body of Lori Hacking, but the trash there is so compacted now, it's made the search more difficult and much more time consuming. Lori's husband, Mark Hacking, is currently in custody at the county jail, accused of shooting and killing his wife. There were some terrifying moments in the sky when a young woman was forced to pilot a plane at an emergency landing. November 9132, Victor, and the pilot of the plane is not well. We have to go back to Laconia, please help me. 
30-year-old Jennifer Truman was flying with her parents in their small plane over New Hampshire when both of her parents were overcome by carbon monoxide. Her father was piloting the plane, but Jennifer quickly took the controls with the help of an air traffic controller. Okay, just advise me on the ground. On the ground. At that point, she broke down. I mean, I could tell her emotions just totally took over. I think we can understand that. Hop says that the young woman made a perfect landing. She avoided a disaster there. Great. Good Boy, news for her. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. Well, Doug Hill is tracking Charlie. Uh, what's the latest that you have from there, Char mm -hmm. uh, Doug? Well, uh, Kathleen and Leon, the uh, center of Hurricane Charlie is well inland at this hour. Let's give you a look at our Viper view. Give you a look at this thing. It is scooting along at nearly 22, 25 miles per hour to the north northeast. It's going to take hurricane effects up to Lakeland and Orlando in the next couple of hours. This uh, 3D Viper view gives you a real perspective as it came in from the Gulf of Mexico. Now we're looking down from the north, looking south to Florida, and that thing is going to move uh, straight up. Uh, the Florida Peninsula and up off the East Coast and reemerge over the Atlantic Ocean early tomorrow morning. We're going to watch it very closely. Let's get through some computer graphics and give you an indication now of the latest track from the National Hurricane Center. Now, as it continues to move, it will weaken in time. In fact, the latest official Hurricane Center track has the center of Charlie at 2 a.m. Sunday just along the Anne Arundel County coast of the Chesapeake Bay. Now, the good news is the winds will be a lot less. They'll be in the 50 mile per hour range, but still, that can cause some problems. Let's take a look at the timeline for you quickly, and we'll leave you with this uh, next image, and that will show you the uh, time we expect things to move into the Washington area. With a fairly sunny sunrise, then maybe showers and storms over southern suburbs as early as 2 a.m., and then between 8 p.m. and 2 a.m. tomorrow night, Sunday morning, that that's when we expect the gustiest winds and heavy rains, enough maybe to bring down some trees and power lines and blow some loose objects around. We'll continue to refine the forecast as Charlie gets a bit closer. More coming up on ABC 7 News. Doug, thanks. All right, sunnier skies overseas where the Olympics are finally underway. It's exciting. Everything mm -hmm. now is really getting underway, and everybody's excited about Michael Phelps. As a matter of fact, his quest for eight Olympic gold medals tomorrow morning, it starts in Athens. The Baltimore native has downplayed his efforts to surpass Mark Spitz's seven golds in the 72 Olympics. But that that won't reduce the pressure that comes with making history. At six foot four, with a wingspan of six seven, it's hard to believe that this is a guy who was at one time afraid to put his face in the water. 19-year-old Michael Phelps is now the world's fastest swimmer, the owner of three world records, and the bearer of the great weight of expectations that he'll win gold in the eight swimming events for which he's qualified to compete. It's the biggest thing in the sport of swimming. So, you know, my goal is, is to obviously win, hopefully win one gold medal, um, and then we'll work from there. But, I mean, that, that's, that's the number one goal for me right now. But will everyone else be happy with just one? Phelps has been in the public eye since last summer when he smashed an unprecedented five world records at the World Championships. He competed at the Sydney Olympics in 2000, but came away with nothing. Since then, Phelps has geared up for Athens and the run for eight golds, practicing in the pool five hours a day, every single day. I have many clubs that train seven days a week, so that gives you one extra set training session every single week where you can pick something up. So, I mean, if I'm getting 52 more practices than everybody else is, that's going to make that little or big difference in the end. He's going to be fun to watch. Hey, at the PGA Championship, Tiger Woods has made headlines everywhere. Yesterday, he shot a three over 75. His record of making cuts, 128 straight tournaments, is now in jeopardy. He is on the course as we speak. Tiger started his round with two birdies. This is hole number one with a short birdie putt, center cut, nothing to it. Birdie the next hole. We thought, okay, everything's fine. Then he went bogey, bogey, and this is number five. Watch this shot. You can just tell by his body language. He doesn't like it. And it is wet. Into the, right water. the cut is plus one. And right now, it doesn't look good. Tiger's at plus three. Ells, Clark, and Leonard are at nine under par. They're the leaders, but all eyes are on Tiger. No question about it. He is at plus three. The cut is one. He's got eight holes left to play. You betting on him or not? I think he's going to do it somehow. It's Tiger. It's Tiger. He's got, he got an eagle or a couple birdies somewhere. Oh, there's always some drama with him. Oh, okay, good right. story. Thanks, Tim. Well, here's what's next on ABC 7 News at 5. Our motto is, is working together to save lives. We'll take you to the National Weather Service, where forecasters are already in the eye of the storm. Take your child on an adventure. Fly to the moon, sail the seven seas, or even search for buried treasure. All you need is a book. 
read with your child, and with a little imagination, the adventures can be endless. Parents, enroll your child for a summer full of activities at your neighborhood public library. It's simple, it's free, and it's fun. Log on to WJLA.com for more information. It's Summer Quest, sponsored by Pizza Hut and ABC7. When the sky shows its fury, there's one place you can turn. Doug Hill and ABC7 First Alert Weather. When violent weather is on the way and you need to know, turn to the voice of experience. Depend on Doug Hill. ABC7 First Alert Weather. It's the Red Hot Summer Sale at Barnes Furniture. Get store-wide savings, plus make no payments and pay no interest for one full year. It's a Red Hot Summer Sale. If it's from Barnes, it's beautiful. And now it's on sale. The story for this Saturday is the sale at Kohl's. It's Kohl's biggest shopping event of the season, with early bird specials from 7 a.m. to noon only. Like all juniors and young men, so an urban pipeline jeans and pants, just $16.99. Famous maker bras, just $13.99. Save an extra 10% on all dress and casual shoes, already 20 to 50% off. Video games for PlayStation and Xbox are just $8.99 and $15.99. Remember, if the sale fits, wear it. Kohl's. It's your wallet, schedule, style. It's Toyota time. The nationwide clear man. Choose to save. Who are you going to turn to for in-depth Redskins coverage this season? Now our colleague Tim Brandt, who is the sports director for the Washington, D.C. ABC affiliate, he tells me that Jansen is done for the season. Breaking Redskins news. Tim Brandt style. Only on ABC 7 News. We want to show you now the latest pictures that we're getting in from Florida tonight. Hurricane Charlie made landfall just about 4 o'clock this afternoon at Sanibel Island. This now is a look at the choppy harbor there. You see the boats uh, bouncing around a little bit there. Scenes like that are being repeated up and down the Gulf Coast this evening. Kathleen? Well, the National Weather Service employs 5,000 people across the USA to track storms like Charlie. And among them is today's working woman, who today you might describe as being one of Charlie's angels. You can see the, the Hurricane Charlie here tracking past Cuba and up heading towards uh, Florida here. Mm -hmm. Joanne Swanson has been with the National Weather Service 17 years, working her way up the ranks of forecasters, now in the director's office at headquarters in Silver Spring. That's our job, is to do the best we can to observe it, assess it, predict it, and get the word out. Right now, the information about Charlie is coming from the Weather Service's 122 forecasting centers, like this one in Sterling, Virginia. Everything is computerized, which is a big change from when Joanne Swanson studied atmospheric science at the University of Washington. You'll notice there's no pens on the table. That is a huge technological leap for the, for the meteorologists because we were very used to drawing and, and doing everything manually. This is a stationary front that's installed along the East Coast. But when it comes to tracking hurricanes, she says observation is critical. We rely very heavily on reconnaissance airplanes to go out and get us that real-time information, the drop signs that tell us how deep the pressure is. Satellite pictures are critical. And getting to know the personality of each storm keeps this job fresh and intriguing. It's the phenomenon, the wonder, the, the grandeur of nature and, and trying to figure out what it's going to do, trying to know and understand what makes it work and so that we can predict it. And with winter storms, spring tornadoes and summer hurricanes, Joanne says there's really no quiet season at the Weather Service. Leon? Then right. All right. Thanks, Kathleen. And thanks to you for joining us. That's all for ABC 7 News at 5. But stay with us because ABC 7 News at 6 starts right now.